Yeah. So I think this question uh, can be reflected upon, uh, don't know what's the answer, but one can reflect upon this, that if this is a play between the Supreme and his own force, which is the Prakriti, whether a lower, higher Prakriti, uh, then who is the one who suffers? Is there any other one than the divine that suffers or maybe it's an illusion? I don't know. You know I don't have the answers at the moment, but it's a question that can be reflected upon. And here Shurabindu started uh, sharing that although she drives him on her fancy's road, so it seems like whatever Prakriti demands, the tendencies and patterns and uh, you know the sanskaras that we are molded with whatever they demand we follow so blindly as if we blindly follow although she drives on, on him on her fancy's roads at play with him as with her child or slave she is like uh, you know uh, she's using him like a plaything in the beginning it appears but the hidden motive that she has is to freedom and the eternal's mastery and immortality's stand above the ground, she moves her seeming puppet of an hour. So it may appear that we are puppeted away by tendencies, emotions, patterns of behavior, and we are puppeted about. There's no doubt about that, that we don't feel puppeted around. But this puppeting around, seeming puppet, has a secret reason. And the secret reason is evolution of the soul consciousness out from this mask of ignorance which the Supreme himself has put on. It's a cloak that Supreme himself has put on so that hide and seek can be played. And through these movements which appear in the beginning as blind movements of Prakriti, through these movements or life happenings, she is making this evolution happen. So the Supreme has involuted in this darkness, is gone and hidden himself inside this darkness. And now through the movements and uh, you know, the happenings of life, he is now wanting to come out. And that's the game that they are playing, hide and seek. And that's what we see in Krishna Leela. You know, he's always playing this hide and seek uh, with gopis and the bhaktas. Uh, even in his mortal session in body's house, an aimless traveler between birth and death, ephemeral dreaming of immortality, to reign she spurs him. So even when we have this body duration where we are living as mortal beings, even here, you know, between birth and death, that's what we were reflecting upon. It's called the bardo state, you know, the bardo of living, for example. It's just an intermediate state. The journey of soul does not end here. The journey of soul has been going on and will go on forever as long as the divine wants. But uh, this mortal session in body's house, where the uh, ephemeral, the passing by, the fleeting, the one in the body, dreaming of immortality, you know, that's what we were discussing, that science is trying so hard so that the age can be uh, progressed, you know, if, if one dies at 50, okay, now you, you die at 90 and then you progress further you know, using whatever measures that we want to use. So there is some element in us which we have recollection of, which actually does not want to die. And it is this memory of our immortality, which is our true nature. And we, we somehow cannot agree that uh, I will come to an end. That's what we feel, that the body comes to an end. That means I also come to an end. But those who have realized themselves know that there is no end to us. We, we never come and go. We, we forever are. But the roles that we stuck in, uh, in this mortal existence, they come and go. So as a role that I am playing in this life, yes, that will end after the body kind of withers away. But the journey of this consciousness that we are, that is a never-ending journey. So this aimless traveler that we appears, we appear as between birth and death, wandering, where we are ephemeral, fleeting, passing by, but dreaming of immortality. To reign, she spurs him. So that is what she pokes at again and again through her, uh, the Prakriti pokes at, so that we become master of our beings. 
so prakriti is not against us you know many a times in talks and you know many people talk about prakriti being lower and just leave it so prakriti is not against us uh, evolving it's just that her way is a laborious process it's a long long detour through which she evolves and that's where mother says which i love you know the fact that she says that you collaborate with the divine you collaborate with what prakriti is toiling to make this happen you know making the life divine possible in this mortal existence he takes up her powers he has harnessed her to the yoke of her own law his face of human thought puts on a crown so as conscious beings as human beings with a lot of mental abilities we are able to harness the laws of prakriti to our own use you know we were talking about solar energy water energy but we feel for a moment that we have harnessed it and we are the master now we are controlling it now but then we are still dependent upon prakriti itself you know so it's not that we are above prakriti we are still for our expression we still need thought words feelings emotions which are movements of prakriti anything which is in time is a movement of prakriti so still the boss is uh, shakti or the aditi or the divine mother she is the boss and why she is the boss because that's the design supreme has allowed her to be the boss and that's why he has surrendered held in her leash so we are still held held in her leash no matter how a uh, good master or control we may have uh, on the movements of prakriti held in her leash bound to her veiled caprice he studies her ways if so he may prevail so if he wants to have a little bit of control he'll have to study the ways of nature the laws of thermodynamics chemistry physics biology all nature you know thoughts feelings how they come and go what are the patterns in which i am mostly absorbed in you know so we study we also have this power of mental discrimination you know what we call the buddhi or the higher power of uh, in- intellect you know but st- it's still within the caprice you know it's still in the uh, a kind of a grasp of prakriti only what we call the higher prakriti held in her leash bound to her veiled caprice he studies her ways if so he may prevail even for an hour and she work out his will so it may appear that okay now for this hour for this duration prakriti is under my control you know i have built a dam and this through this dam i'll uh, you know generate some hydroelectric power and yes i am the master but it's only she she appears now the, uh, the rest of the three lines are very beautiful to obey she faints she follows her creature's lead for him she was made lives only for his use so that is how she behaves she behaves that yes 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 my boss for you only i was made and for you only i will you know work in whatever way you demand you know, for your passions uh, fulfillment but conquering her then is he most her slave he is her dependent all his means are hers so it can be seen at both the levels you know at the global level when we use these powers of nature and then at an individual level when we think that we have mastered our thought we see that we have actually no control over what we are thinking you know i may think that i am so courageous right but in that moment do you have any other option but to not be courageous so it seems that we have control but it also seems that we actually are, are not in control it's only grace that's making thing hap- things happen and we think that i am in charge you know for people who may have say you know a fought a disease or an illness i wonder often that uh, do they have any other option in that moment maybe their nature their make is such that they are bound to overpower whatever situation they are in they could not get depressed you know so i often wonder that that's why the 
the meaning of grace comes to picture that we we think that we are doing but we are not doing right and it's only when we are not doing beautiful things mostly happen so like we come out of the way we stop to being the obstacle and then beautiful things happen and then the ego pops up again and it says i did that you know and there the whole game kind of gets spoiled a bit so nothing without her he can she rules him still at last so this is not this is an ongoing evolutionary process where through ripening of many many lifetimes of experiences finally he wakes up to a memory of self who he is truly at last he wakes to a memory of self he sees within the face of deity the godhead breaks out through the human mold her highest heights she unmasks and is his mate now the game shifts a little bit or appears to shift it was already a shifted game but we in our limited mind were not able to see that game but now as he awakens as the purusha within awakens to his own presence that's what we call you know when we talk about knowing yourself as awareness knowing yourself as consciousness consciousness already is there we don't have to do anything but it becomes conscious of itself so we wake up to our own essence i realize who i truly am layers of ignorance are dropped off for a moment the godhead breaks out through the human mold and he wakes up you know so this waking up is very important which has been stressed by masters throughout uh, eons of uh, history you know that wake up wake up to your hidden uh, power wake up to your hidden essence who you truly are so they are not asking us to gather more knowledge they are just asking us to break this slumber of senses and what is the slumber of senses that whatever we sense or perceive through the limited senses and then we then the mind perceives right the mind makes interpretation based on whatever i have heard i have touched i have felt the mind makes limited interpretations and we think that is reality so we cling to our opinions and ideas about what we see hear and feel and we see how cannot how can it be that this is not right because i have touched it i have felt it you know so we we give so much of solidity to our opinions uh, and in that solidity we get stuck we take senses to be the absolute while we have to question uh, whether this is true you know so in this questioning that uh, just whatever we were holding to very very tightly we begin to hold it now very lightly so yes opinions may be there my ideas may be there yes i may have sensed something that person may have said something but I, how can i be sure that it's true because i know that my mind has a filter you know so to be aware of our limitations i think that's what mother calls humility to be aware that uh, my seeing perception is all limited and others also again you know act in limited way so to also have compassion that if i am acting in a limited way others are also allowed to kind of uh, act in a limited way although that's not their highest possibility but people can err i also err you know i also make mistakes so if we know more about our errors our own filters of perception then it is easier to see uh where others are coming from then it's easier to so called you know forgive although we are nobody to forgive but we hold uh, judge grudgement you know grudges and resentments against people but then it becomes easier to let go of that we only burden ourselves in in those burdens or what we carry for years you know years the kabir has this couplet man tu samajh ke laad ladaniya पीना हो तो इहा पीले आगे देश निपनिया सो ही सेज दैट ओ माइंड बी वेरी केयरफुल इन होल्डिंग ऑन टू दिस बर्डन दैट यू आर होल्डिंग ऑन 
if you really want to drink the divine nectar the right moment is only now you know and now it's almost like as if we are in eternal now a now that never ends and every now we have a choice seeming choice you know whether i want to carry the burden or whether i want to let go because they say that in moment of death also the biggest thing that you have to or the least thing that you have to do is to let go let go of all roles responsibilities let go of all the attachments and we don't know when the moment of death is there and that's why the stress upon letting go now right now you know let go of our opinions let go of our ideas let go of our images about ourselves and experience the lightness right now not wait for when i will be dead because who knows whether you are there for the next moment or not so till this waking up to our own consciousness happens we are just a plaything all of us have experienced being puppeted around you know so till then he is a plaything in her game and why we experience this playfulness or puppeting around because the lord himself has agreed for the play right that's why this drama happens in life so it becomes easier i believe to accept the drama so far that we have been engaged in and not to have resentments because this was the design so not to have grudges against it that how can god be so cruel puppeting us around you know because he is puppeting himself around he is not puppeting any other person around yeah so this is i'm sorry i took so long uh, today to again talk about this but this was where we stopped uh, last time so any reflections here anyone yes sir uh, this uh, question that you were you know the, not question but this thing for reflection that you were talking about as to do we really have a control over anything right like i think these line nothing without her he can she rules him still and he is a dependent uh it's it's very strange that one wants to say that one has free will but when one looks back like when i look back there are so many these things that you know one feels that i don't know how i how i was able to do that so uh, as a you know when i was in college i had some opportunity to work uh, to interact with some uh, patients in women which is a mental institute like some people who used to visit who used to be the day care people there like not day care sorry who used to come for the day to spend time there and all of these diseases all of the diseases they had were basically hormonal you know in that disease that hormone is extra so that's why that person would have you know say anxiety or the other one would have uh, ocd the third one would have uh, i don't know hallucination so again you know this question keeps coming that if we are just affected by say again hormones right like what will do we have what control do we have and uh, yeah like and like you said like not divine is puppeting nobody but himself so that kind of does come but yeah that's a way i mean thing to wonder i mean not wonder but just to even think about that how much do am i doing any ways and if he is doing everything or she is doing everything then what is this <laughs> that is happening yeah just thank you yeah i think one can also then laugh about it you know a bit reflecting over it because uh, at one moment of time i may be really in pain and suffering and when i see you know or read these lines then it occurs to me that as you said you know who is suffering you know when it's the just the divine and his own shakti his own power having the game and the fun then what is the solidity of suffering one wonders and in that questioning in that digging out i think some revelation may happen yeah there's a need the suffering does seem so real right yeah so yeah happening i mean that's i think the weirdest part that once you are above it like not maybe above it like aside you know one is over 
it's like you can laugh about it but once it's when it's happening you know it's like laughing and then you want to just cry what is happening absolutely to you. absolutely so it's like it appears so real that it's like it's yeah. weird that how can something that we know mm. and we have suffered so many times maybe even in the same situations yeah and yes if it happens again i still you know most likely maybe for a smaller duration or maybe lesser intensity and yet it keeps bringing up yeah 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 so there would be a few lines which will come up today i i hope we are able to cover them today where he shares that uh, when he uh, he is touched by the touch of pain the touch of prakriti the soul consciousness actually enjoys that touch he takes delight in that pain that's why we see that image of shiva you know where kali is dancing on shiva and or doing all the you know the quivering is happening and he is providing his own breast for the whole drama because he is taking delight in that touch that's why uh, so yeah let's see uh, we'll go through that today yeah thank you for sharing anyone wants to add on anything okay so let us go ahead uh, the lines in yellow anyone yeah till then he is a plaything in her game a seeming regent yet her fancy is toy a living robot moved by her energy springs he acts as in the movements of a dream an automation stepping in the grooves of fate he stumbles on driven by her whip of force yeah thank you <clears throat> till then before he wakes up you know till that point he is a plaything in her game her seeming regent yet her fancy toy so he seems to be like you know if uh, uh if some major person is absent so regent means uh, as if you are acting for that major person on on her kind of his behalf her behalf so he appears that he is uh, acting on his, uh, her behalf and yet he is all the time his fancy toy her fancy toy till then he is a plaything in her game her seeming regent yet her fancy toy so at times he may take up this uh, image of that he is the one who is kind of acting out all the actions when the queen is not there but he is still moved and puppeted around by prakriti herself because he has allowed that to happen a living robot moved by her energies spins i think uh, these lines don't require much talking because this is so obvious we live like this you know we live like these automatons for a long 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 time a living robot moved by her energies springs now one day you are full of energy joy springing out of your being you can't help it you know in that moment if somebody tells you know mood bana lo you know you become very sad and depressed you can't do it so where is the choice one can question if you are really joyous and one says that if you really have a choice then you know do something else you can't do that it's hard <laughs> so he is almost a living robot and i may actually feel that wow the joy that i am feeling today it is done by my actions i must have done something uh, in order to experience this joy but uh, i feel like a master but i am not a master i am still moved by the prakriti herself a living robot moved by her energy springs so if the mood today is up i am up if the mood today is down i am down that's prakriti he acts as in the movements of a dream now this line personally i i have a bias towards this line because you know, there is something about dream which is so fascinating not the content of dreams per se but uh, just the idea of dreaming you know what really happens when we dream and how real it appears in a dream 
and when when you know you may have have had dreams where you begin to cry almost you know the dream appears so real that you feel that uh, you have to cry the drama in the dreams appears so so real and in buddhism they uh, talk about the mother also has talked about the sadhana of you know sleep yoga or the sadhana of dreaming in one sense and in buddhism also they talk about dream yoga in the sense of uh, waking up to the dream in the sense to realize that this is a dream going on so they talk about this sadhana of whether we can maintain consciousness while we are dreaming to know that i am dreaming that would be so beautiful you know that you are you're having a dream it's not that the dream is not there you are having a dream and in the middle of the dream a half of you a bit of you knows that this is a dream going on now why they stress upon this is because uh, if i can maintain the consciousness knowing myself as consciousness in the middle of the dream then i can make use of the dream rather than being puppeted around by the dream which we are you know we have so many sobs and cries within the dream many a times because we think it's real but while uh, if i know it's a dream then i can uh, do even self inquiry in dreams you know i can question in dream i can question my thought patterns subconscious patterns in the dream but we are not mostly able to do that unless we have done some practice because it requires a 24/7 of a sadhana you know in the day time in the waking time i have to know each moment as a dream how hard it is how solid and real the day time experiences are for us you know we give so much importance to them so much ye ho gaya to pata nahi kya ho gaya oh my god this has happened oh my god the whole world is upset so everything we give so much of solidity everything appears so so real so if we am we are not able to maintain a separate parallel consciousness throughout the day which is untouched by the movements of the waking uh, state then it is impossible for me to be conscious in the dream so that is what the buddhism stresses upon the idea basically is not to get lost in the sleep and sadhana of dreaming but to do the sadhana of dreaming so that i am able to maintain this parallel consciousness while dreaming that i am dreaming so you you are not losing your true essence even for a second because in dream it's very easy to lose you know have you seen people who just kind of just sleep you know they are so tired just they just thuck and gone because we cannot maintain that consciousness you know that thread of consciousness we cannot maintain it while we go into this unconscious slumber and it would be so beautiful a sadhana if we can do this practice not only during the day yes during the day absolutely necessary so that we can carry into the dreaming state also the same parallel consciousness knowing yourself as that consciousness which sees everything which is aware of all the things but which is not dependent of all the happenings it's a very very hard and long and arduous sadhana and rare people would take it but i think it's worth taking it up uh, it's not that only a few people have to and rest others don't have to if we feel inclined towards it i think it can be a beautiful journey so till the time Uh, we wake up to our consciousness i'll take reflections soon he acts as in the movements of a dream he's puppeted around like a living robot an automaton stepping in the grooves of fate you know this is beautiful sentence again as if you know you have seen how we uh, we, we have these play trains you know toy trains the moment you put the toy train on the track it runs round and round and round and round and round it cannot let go of the groove right it's stuck in that groove so he says an automaton stepping in the grooves of fate this is what we do unconsciously living that's why mother stresses so much of 
become conscious of movements, become conscious of your thoughts, turn everything to the divine. And how would I turn everything to the divine if I don't become conscious of it? So consciousness, that's why it is stressed so much because the journey is from unconsciousness to consciousness. Hmm? So as if I'm stuck in the grooves, patterns of my thinking in my unconsciousness, helplessly, but not knowing that I am helpless because even that consciousness is a beautiful part if it can come in our life that, oh, I am unconscious. Even that can come, you know, that's a beautiful baby step ahead. So usually we are not even, uh, no, we don't even know that we are ignorant. That's the biggest ignorance. I don't even know that I am unconscious because if I know that I am unconscious, then half of the consciousness is already awake. A light is already there. And that's why if we look more closely at, we are able to look at our weaknesses, faults, and what we have to improve, that's already a beautiful path or journey ahead because at least something in me has started to wake up to the reality of my being. He stumbles on, driven by her whip of force. And with this whip of force, you know, imagine that somebody is, you know, that how we uh, do with the animals many a times, not a very pretty sight, but with a whip, you kind of ask the animal to go ahead. And he goes ahead because he's conditioned to it. So we become conditioned to the ways of Prakriti. And if not for the whip, I don't move. So I need the whip from time to time. And I go on in those grooves of fate. But mother says that fate can be turned over, turned around when you allow grace in your life. So it is us, we keep on blocking grace in our life. And when we become more porous and receptive and grounded, then grace has more chance to flow. What you know, Kabir in one of the beautiful couplets, he says that Naman, huh? he talks about Naman. Naman means bowing down your head. He says, Naman badi sansar me nahi name so neech, dhara se parvat kate, dungal dhar ke beach. So he says, the one who bows down his head to the tremendous amount of grace that is there, he is. Uh, so one who doesn't bow down the head, he is almost a very of a very low quality, low uh, kind of category. He says niche. And dhara se parbat kate. So a mountain can be cut by uh, a drop of water if it keeps on falling on a rock. You know, we have seen how impressions are hap happen in a rock. If for a long time a river or a kind of a stream flows through rocks you know it changes the rocks and it it uh, changes the rocks because the rock is not ready to move so it disfigures the rock but you also have seen in the rivers there are weeds and reeds what they do is they don't get disfigured why because they are so soft and pliable that they bow down they bow down to the flow of the river and hence they don't need to be cut they don't need to go undergo any disfiguration so he says the one who bows down does not need to go any disfiguration. Then because he's allowing the grace or the river of grace to flow uh, through himself. So yes, I'll, I'll pause here. Any reflections, anyone? Okay, so we'll do these two lines uh, because after that, uh, kind of a longer one comes. So anyone who feels ready. His thought labors a block 
block in times fields he his will he thinks his own is shaped in her porch yeah thank you oh, oh. so through our limited powers of thought we try to kind of figure things out his thought labors and how we labor like a bullock in times fields so a bullock usually works very hard you know it's like full of that yoke behind her on which things are kept and she is working really really hard she is laboring she is toiling through the fields that's how our thought works hmm? and we are so much absorbed in what has to be done what needs to done to be done this come this work becomes important that work becomes important labor laboring really really hard his will he thinks his own this is what we were you know earlier reflecting upon is shaped in her forge so you think you are the master here you know he says his will he thinks his own is shaped in her forge forge is you know a place where metal works are done kind of casted met, uh, wrought iron and other things so a forgery you know so she creates the shapes and if she has chosen for you that you are going to have this kind of a will well so be it so there is nothing that you are responsible for. you are you are you know as if you are the master that's really very very powerful realization because often times it really burdens us you know many a times we see people full of a very powerful will and maybe at times a very kind of a lacking will and uh, we are born like that we we are made like that she is the master before we break the mold you know before we are able to become the master of our own selves his thought labors a, like a bullock in times fields and times fields are vast and that's why it takes so many lifetimes before we reach the true memory of our true self vast vast time fields and for for many lifetimes we are just toiling with the thought his will he thinks his own is shaped in her forge i think this is a very humbling sentence amongst many others that uh, it's only grace that making that is making things happen but at the same time we cannot you know this is not to say that we have to let go of effort because effort the capacity of effort also has been granted to us so uh, it is just for reflection purposes that we can reflect over it that what choice do we have do we have any choice uh, if i am born with a strong will can i have a weak will at a point and if in at a point i am having a weak will do i have the choice to have a stronger one so this is something which we can really take home with us and kind of think about it since we have thought for reflection or maybe in our silences something else comes up greater dawning or a realization yeah bullock is male uh, yes Monica. not female male uh, did i say something about male female i don't recollect no you said she she it's okay not... okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah bell na bell bell is male male always yeah right yeah thank you for the correction okay so we'll go ahead any reflection any further addition is it please go ahead anyone who wants to read obedient to world nature's dumb control driven by his own formidable power his chosen partner his chosen partner in a titan game 
her will he has made the master of his fate her whim the dispenser of his pleasure and pain yeah so uh, till that point uh, that the realization happens and the soul becomes conscious of its own self wakes up to when we wake before waking up to our own self he appears as obedient you know like an obedient slave this uh, because since the surrender has happened the purusha has surrendered to the prakriti's movements obedient to world nature's dumb control driven by his own formidable power and whose power is prakriti it's his own power formidable it's very very powerful a power which can not be really challenged formidable power obedient to world nature's dumb control it appears like a dumb control as we read earlier also like blind movements driven by his own formidable power so he is not being puppeted around by anyone else there are no two he is puppeting around himself in one way can be said driven by his own formidable power his chosen partner in a titan game so the two who are one you know uh, prakriti or shakti or the divine mother his is his own chosen playmate in a titan game a game which is of a uh, really titan titanic proportions titanic means you know it's titan also referring to superhuman proportions and many a times it also is referred to in like when one calls want to call like an evil kind of a big uh, force there also we use titan uh, i think related to asura also but here he is using in in the sense of superhuman proportions such as the game of purusha and prakriti going on uh, his chosen partner in a titan game her will he has made the master of his fate so he has agreed that your will prakriti's will is will be the master okay whatever you will say my fate will agree her whim the dispenser of his pleasure and pain so whim is something which we kind of it's like a you know my whim that i demand chocolate today for example for no particular reason you just put a demand in front you know it it's not a logical kind of a decision or a, a demand and that's what we call whims and fancies and whatever her whims and fancies are he becomes uh, kind of available to that okay you you want me to be sad today okay let me be sad today now that's why we say that the awareness never says no to any thought feeling or sensation you know imagine that jealousy has come now awareness does not say no 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 jealousy is bad thing you cannot come but why we suffer is that many a times we have a lot of resistance uh, in the being and through the resistance we mostly suffer and that's why uh, many of these works inner works also kind of they depend upon allowing the jealousy to be not following the dictate of jealousy but having a you know kind of a tete tete with jealousy or rendezvous with jealousy okay let let us hear what she wants to say so to validate in the sense to allow the movement to let it be there but you are also free not to follow the dictate because awareness never says no to any movement so purusha allows every movement to happen anger blame you know so many worst worst possible things can have happened in the history of mankind and all has been allowed because all these are uh, kind of movements through the prakriti through which the consciousness evolves hmm? so if i am a very suppressing master and uh, earlier people were not waking up uh, to my suppression now they begin to take a stand up so now their consciousness is rising up that if our ethics and you know whatever uh, boundaries are crossed i have to take a stand stand for myself so i begin to take a stand for myself so we may feel that the suppressor is evil but owing to the suppressor i am able to take a stand for myself 
so that also has a purpose so that that i am waking up to my inner strength so it, he it, it appears that he is allowing uh, him to be again and again puppeted around whatever he she desires whatever whims and fancies she may have her whim the dispenser of his pleasure and pain anything here anyone yes jashri ji yeah and regarding the suppressor a point you mentioned yeah yeah uh, i can understand that yes it is it will help me or it i can use it as a raw material but it is only in the form of understanding but when it comes to the real thing as taru said i feel only the pain yeah yeah so how to go about it because we know it is there in theory yes this is all correct and then as the previous you said that uh, that uh, it's too difficult to go beyond that yeah so, and then the, i can say yeah the resistance is there i can feel when it comes to some some episodes i can oh yeah i can separate myself and say the resistance is there yeah but uh, to really work it out maybe once that episode has passed then yes i can go back and then i can realize and okay maybe next time when the same episode or something similar happens yes uh, i will do that but once that episode happens it's then i have to um, tell myself again and again and uh, uh, yeah yeah so i think what i understand uh, from what you are sharing is that imagine that there i i am in front of a suppressor yes mostly what you are what i am understanding is mostly i am in pain of the suppression yes right yeah so uh, and you are saying how do i go about it yes so one of the infinite number of ways possible is that uh, you allow the pain to be as long as you can tolerate the pain because there would be a limit to your tolerating the pain and one day you will have to rise now that one day can be maybe in this lifetime or another one but there is a limit to that so that's why you know uh, there was a line here in savitri earlier where he says that prakriti is like a gymming place for the purusha mm. and how do we, we do gymming that i give myself more weights weights to carry so if i can carry 20 i will try 21 tomorrow mm. that's how i gym so i give my myself a difficult challenge mm. right and it pains you know whoever has done gymming we know that it pains when the muscles are developing yes. but we also know that something good is happening so i think it's just a matter of time that one day i will say that's enough mm. and i will rise that's what we call durga rising or shakti rising because there is a limit to this suppression you cannot be suppressed forever for all the lifetimes that you will be having so that is one of the possible ways that i see here that Uh, and we don't know when that limit will be reached because every person may have different limits mm. yeah 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 you know it's like almost like we when we have a dental you know issue uh, mm. so <laughs> we i can tolerate as long as it's coming and going and coming and going and coming and going but when it's too painful then i decide okay now i have to go to the doctor <laughs> no something like that yes yeah yeah taru you were, you have uh, unmuted you wanted to share yeah i think you know, one more that you know about the suppression or resistance like you know whenever there is any resistance from outside and stuff so again i have in my case seen it being really helpful in pushing me you know if somebody says no you can't mm -hmm. then it comes at yes i will but if nobody's there to say no you can't i see myself being more 
going into an inner you know you know into an inertia that yes i can do it any time so that thing about you know rising up and saying i will and i will do it right now is more active when i am denied of something that you or you know i've been told not to do it i've seen that so what you were sharing was you know again it resonated and about you said about you know surrender that when you're surrendering to prakriti you had used this word and yet you know how here it says that dumb control you know like when i think about say saying something or oh, this naturally happens with me it's effortless yes and yet when i think about you know offering every moment myself to the mother that feels at least right now you know that it requires vigilance it requires sincerity it requires will so again how you know surrender you know it's just that that too is surrender i didn't realize that that if i'm saying that yes it's naturally happening sometimes i feel it's beyond me which is not right we always have a choice we choose not to take it so i really like that you use the word surrender even here because that is true that too is you know i'm making somebody my master and i'm saying it's happening through me and yeah so thank you yeah i think it's really very intriguing very intriguing the drama that we are all engaged in in our lives to see that how we as you know taru and jashi ji were mentioning that how we have been given opposites so that the one who has hidden himself in the ignorance can rise so there is a purpose to this duality and it's it's the case with each one of us i mean who has in family not one person not you know i'm not talking of many but at least one person two persons will be there in your immediate vicinity who will be the most difficult kind of partners or family members you have and there must be a reason for that as taru was mentioning that if i uh, if i don't have that opposition in front of me then i don't care to rise and that's so true even if you look look at physical sports you know gymming what you do you're always giving yourself more and more challenges when you are sport you know you're a sports person mother says that she would always used to play with people who were much 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 kind of higher than her in lawn tennis and she says that i never won but i always learned i think how beautiful can that be so you're not playing so that you can win but you are playing so that you can learn i think if that attitude we can have even a bit of that a drop of that in our lives that i am here to learn i am not here to prove myself right or wrong to the other person i think then we will have i would say less enemies <laughs> or less persons who would appear evil in front of us because uh, i am just bothered with my learning in one sense that is absolutely selfish but i think uh, that's a very auspicious kind of selfishness one can have that uh, no matter whether i win or lose uh, i learned you know i learned and such a beauty it is that uh, even through our darknesses we learn so much you know all of us here have been through darknesses i can guarantee you know <laughs> through our ages also that uh, and we have learned through them so if the darkness now appears again i will not be able to say that don't come because it has given me so much and then mother says that always smile and be grateful for what you have in life now i can say that you know now if i have learned through my darkness and also through happinesses we learn very little through happinesses but yet still we learn uh then i will not be feeling ungrateful for these people who are opposing to me i feel ungrateful only because i am at the moment not able to make the necessary progress you know if i have cancer for example why will i appear uh, like why will cancer appear like a enemy to me because it's making my life so problem problematic i have to run to doctors and my you know i'm not learning but if i learn through cancer then uh, i personally have felt that i don't even want to say okay you go away i have never been somehow able to say cancer you go away 
i'm not saying that i'm over it like you know i'm not saying that the fear may not come again but i can't remember any point where i was saying that why don't you go away you no know, because i realized that what has it given me is much much more important than uh, kind of showing it away so that's where we become more and more grateful to the divine for even the challenges in our life because then we are learning from the challenges we feel suffering mostly because we stop to learn in that phase we become too stuck with our thought patterns that my looking is right and my perception is fine and other people are the evil people there we get stuck but if i take everything as a raw material okay let me see what is it trying to help me with i think then things change then you know things really take a different turn so yeah it's very very intriguing and that's why it may be you know that's why maybe it's called divine mystery because the more closer you go to it the more humbled you feel like more on ground and like unending mystery really you cannot yeah okay so i got lost a bit here so uh, we were in yeah these pink lines anyone who can who wants to go ahead he has sold himself he has sold himself into her regal power for any blow or boon that she may choose even in what is suffering to our sense he feels the sweetness of her mastering touch in all experience meets her blissful hands thank you mohan thank you mohan ji he has sold himself into her regal power again you know this play i'll i'll share this poem today written by shyorubindu it's called the world game and it is talking about uh, the play uh, the this play of the girl and boy or ishwara and ishwari he has sold himself into her regal power the royal you know this big power that she is for any blow or boon that she may choose so whatever she chooses for the soul consciousness he agrees says okay bring it on and i think this this can only happen in love those of us who have so called fallen in human love i don't know if i'm using the right words i think uh, only in deep love we allow all kind of torture to happen hmm? because the torture doesn't seem like a torture it appears like a sweet touch and that's the love between the shiva and shakti or ishwara and ishwari he has sold himself this can only happen in love he has sold himself into her regal power for any blow or boon that she may choose so there is this oneness amongst them because i cannot even use trust or faith because trust would be on somebody other right i trust you there would be some other person there is such a strong oneness that whatever she chooses since they are coming from one origin only he knows that will be a right movement it it must be required for growth of or the evolution for any blow or boon that she may choose he is ready even in what is suffering to our sense he feels the sweetness of her mastering touch how beautiful so what to the ego may appear full of suffering for the soul consciousness it's a very sweet touch it it requires uh, it demands a different kind of a state of consciousness actually so that we can touch the sweetness even in a kind of a poisonous bite demands a different level of consciousness in all experience meets her blissful hands so whatever may be the experience no need to label it name it whatever 
myriad infinite number of experiences in all experiences the soul consciousness the supreme purusha enjoys the delight of the touch of prakriti and that's how that's how the game carries on on so there was this mention of rishi mandavya you know uh, when he was just walking out walking like taking a walk and he was stung by a scorpion and for him it was like bliss of the divine now imagine you know, for an ego for a separate self one would be in fear and anxiety oh my god what has happened to me and what could happen to me but for him it was like as if god has touched him that sting of a scorpion so let me share this uh, poem with you uh, the world came i'll change the screen for a second yeah the world game so it's not a very long one but not very short also a little long also but let's go through it i think it's worth going through uh, would anyone like to read taru would you like to read the world came in god ear yet unmeasured by a man's thought or by the earth's dance or the moon's spin i have guarded the law of the invisible for the sake of thy smile o sweet while lives while lives while lives followed innumerable winged lives as if wing crossing a wide sea i have washed on the path of the centuries for the light of thy running feet the uh, should i pause now after a para or read it no, i think uh, my idea was just to kind of go through it so up to you if you want to pause and maybe reflect go through over. it yeah the earth dancing with the sun in his fire robe was it not thou circling my flame soul the gazings of the moon in its nectar joy were my look questing for thee through space the verse haste and the racing of the tense mind and the long gallop of fleet years were my speed to arrive through the flux of things and to neighbor at last thy face the earth seeking is mine and the immense scope of the slow eons my heart's way for i follow a secret and sublime will and the steps of thy mother might in the dim brute and the peering of man's brain and the calm sight in a god's eyes it is i questing in life's broken ways for thy laughter and love and light when time moved not nor yet space was unrolled wide for thy game of the words i gave myself to thy delightful hands of power to govern me and move and drive to earth's dumbness i fell for thy desires sport weaving my spirit stuff in a million pattern shapes of souls made with me alive 
the worlds are only a play field of thou i am a huge mass of the 21 i am in thee as thou art in me o love we are closer than heart and breast from thee i leap forth truck to a spirit spark i mount back in the soul's fire to our motion the stars whirl in the swing of time our oneness in nature's rest when light first from the unconscious immense burst to create nebula and sun it was the meeting of our hands to the empty night that enkindled the fateful blaze the huge systems abandoned their inner trance and this green crater of life rose that we might look on each other form on form on form from the depths of a living gaze the mind traveled in its ranges tear on tear with its white eyed or its rapt thought my thought toiling labored to know all myself in the to our atoms and widths and deeps my all yearn to die all to be held close to the heart heart and to self self as a sea with the sea joins or limbs with limbs and as waking's delight with sleeps when mind pinnacled is lost in thy light wasps and the man drowns in the white god thy truth shall ungirdle its golden flames and thy diamond witnesses blaze my souls lumined shall discover their joy self they shall clasp all in the near one and the sorrow of the heart shall turn to bliss and thy sweetness possess earth's days then shall life be thy arms drawing thy own clasp to thy breasts rapture or calm peace with thy joy for the spirit's immortal flame and thy peace for its deathless base our eyes meeting the long love shut in deep eyes and our beings held fast and one i shall know that the game was well worth the toil whose end is thy divine embrace yeah thank you so it just gives us many many glimpses of this play that we have been talking about not that we'll understand it at once but i think it just to give us a glimpse of what is kind of happening so let me just go back to these lines again so this uh, this is what we were at that when we are in a different state of consciousness when we are more in touch with us, our soul consciousness that even all the experiences whether they are blissful painful doesn't matter you know uh, experiences are just experiences they they just appear uh, they are taken in delight they are as you know shiva uh, loves the touch of shakti on her on his breast but uh, when kali or shakti gives us a blow we don't like it because we are not in that state of consciousness 
but the soul consciousness is always enjoying all these touches hmm? and that's why uh, when we shift our consciousness to a grateful one like right? mother says that be grateful for whatever you receive we actually shift to the soul consciousness from the outer surface consciousness so that's the basic idea i believe that uh, it is possible for us to also use <clears throat> gratitude as an idea of shifting our consciousness to our deepest being rather than mostly acting from the surface consciousness yeah. so let us uh, take up these three lines and then we can to the end today or maybe we can complete also i'm actually open to it but it's good to take little little bits uh, and not do bigger chunk at once so yeah anyone who feels ready on his heart he bears the happiness of her tread and the surprise of her arrivals joy in each event and every moment's chance yeah thank you so this is the delight you know ashurbindu shares that the creation is based on delight i think we get a glimpse of that here the delight of prakriti touching the purusha hmm? the two who are one and that's why the emanation would have come forth because if i am only one being all by myself i mean what's the fun <laughs> i'm sure there is fun but what's the fun so in order to have fun and delight let me create another out of me which is my own self only so that and and then i kind of go in hiding so that i can enjoy this touch of and have the delight you know because there's so much of love there on his heart he bears the happiness of her tread you know remembering ourselves this that image of shiva uh, shiva's breast on which kali is dancing and uh, kind of killing all the asuras so the kali you know also refers to kal or the time the tread of time and time means change things will come and go people will be coming and going experiences will be coming and going things will be taken away from our hands you know we cannot clutch anything forever so this one enjoys when one is in the soul consciousness so shiva's consciousness enjoys the happiness of kali's tread and the surprise of our arrivals joy in each event and every moment's chance so what we call usually we become very unhappy about when we talk about things are so fleeting you know they come and go and they come and go now here we see almost a delight in that coming and going that yes you know it's it's delightful that things come and go that newer unfoldings can happen that i don't have only like four or five people who are just sticking to me all my life but yeah they may go and the newer ones may come who knows so in at each and every moment shiva has this delight ishwara has this delight of being touched by the movements of ishwari or prakriti or shakti so this is really i think this uh, when i was going through these lines it, it really gives you a kind of a first of all delight you know when we go through these lines and also one one settles down i believe you know one may be really too up and high and running about one's own life but i feel that these lines really settle you down in, in saying that it is their play let me do my best but it is their play i don't have to get too worried about all this you know things will come and go and things are fleeting and not to clutch and cling on to them and hence enjoy the drama or the play whenever one can yeah so let us uh, pause here and then we can continue i think this yeah uh, still goes on for a while yes yeah any further reflection any addition anyone okay so thank you in that case thank you for joining in 
and sharing and reflecting. Yeah, Jashri ji, you want to share something? No, I just want to thank you, Monica, very yeah. much for the explanation. Yeah, thank you too. It really meant a lot to me. Yeah. And then I remembered in White Roses, Mother has uh, said, there's a quote from Sri Aurobindo yeah. saying, uh, the Lord will not, uh, <laughs> the difficulties will be in proportion to your uh, capacities. Yeah. Yeah. That's what once yeah. you finish saying all those things that, what, uh, that came to my mind. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you too for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. It's thank totally you. Meditative, yeah. Yes, very meditative. Thank you. Thank you.